तुम कैसे हो इट्स अ रियल प्लेजर टू बी हियर टुडे स्टैंडिंग हियर ऑन द स्टेज ऑफ मुनि सेवा आश्रम इट्स अ प्लेजर फ्रॉम अ पर्सनल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बट आल्सो फ्रॉम अ प्रोफेशनल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आई हैव बीन कमिंग टू द मुनि सेवा आश्रम फॉर द पास्ट फ्यू इयर्स एंड माय इंटरेक्शंस हियर हैव बीन एक्सेलेंट uh Deepak bhai I've learned so much and also have been very inspired to carry this work forward so today I want to talk about a very specific job that I was given and I think you've already heard a little bit about it it's on the title and so why I'm here it's essentially from this statement that in 2014 at the SCI conference in Sacramento the solar cooking sector you us requested there be a performance evaluation process for solar cookers so at that time there was no international standard for cookers that would be recognized across the board and the need for that is clear that if a manufacturer makes a solar cooker and says that it can do so much can it actually do that <laughs> so this is of a great importance for the whole sector for um uh, customers <clears throat> manufacturers and also for for people that lead projects so Sol- solar cookers international sci has uh what i th- what i find is a, an ideal role here SCI is a neutral international agency that represents the solar cooking sector, okay? That means SCI is not promoting a particular cooker. It's promoting all cookers. Um SCI is responding to this request and through a transparent process is developing a performance evaluation process PEP for solar cookers. When I say transparency, um one example is that I've been calling manufacturers and uh, talking to uh, various ones about aspects of a performance evaluation one question that came up was what pot should we use <laughs> what what cookware what container and um i was getting various feedback but i think the one that really stuck with me is that the pot that is provided by a manufacturer with their solar cooker is the one that should be used for that test. So this is part of the interaction that I've been having and as at at SCI with uh, manufacturers in developing PEP. So SCI is suggesting a uh, PEP based on the ASABE S580.1 document which is testing and reporting uh, solar cooker performance and this document actually harmonizes very well with the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves and the uh international organization organization of standards um which is uh, in the process of developing uh, ISO 285 for clean cook stoves and i put those in bold because this is probably one of the main points that i would like to make here today is that as a group it is very important that we have one voice to present to the GACC a specific way to test solar cookers. If we come to them with scattered voices, they may not take us very seriously. So, um that's one of our goals for this this conference is to come together and have one unified voice. The GACC is ready to hear us. We've been having uh discussions with them and they're eager to bring solar cookers into the suite of tests that they have already. and um uh, that's what we're going to be talking about <clears throat> ISO 285 also is already um referencing ASABE S580.1 and um let me now tell you a little bit more about that but our goals as i said is to uh, establish an agreed upon PEP for testing solar cookers we're going to promote this to the GACC testing centers worldwide and this will be a benefit to customers, manufacturers and project leaders, people that need to buy large quantities of solar cookers. So we do need to have this uh in place and it will be beneficial for the entire uh, sector. So in short, this document, the ASABE S580.1 requires a testing time during midday. So I'm going to give you just this review here. From solar noon plus or minus 2 hours. 
Each cooker is to be loaded with 7,000 grams of water per square meter of the cooker, the aperture of the cooker. And then during the evaluation, um, record, we need to record water temperature, ambient temperature, wind speed, and of course the solar energy. Um, in 10 minute intervals, we'll be collecting data. All the data will be normalized according to the input energy. And then uh, this will be plotted on a curve with respect to the difference from ambient. And this will ultimately give us one number, an answer, and that will be the evaluation of, of this mode. Now this test, this particular uh, protocol, works very well for um, panel cookers and box ovens. But for concentrators, we have a slightly different animal. <laughs> and um, I'm going to invite Dr. A.J. Chandak up here at the, at the end of my talk to give his, uh, his view um, on that. Um, uh, he, has a, he has come up with a great um, um, aspect for promoting and testing um, concentrated cookers. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so you see it at least. This is the ASAVE uh, document. It's a six-page document. It's essentially a laboratory manual. How do you do the test? So if you've been through uh, science class at school, uh, which you all have done, uh, this would look familiar. So there's a, there's a total of six pages. Um, in this page, you see that uh, there's a graphic that um, indicates that it's important to have the aperture of a cooker. So this way, you know how much light is coming into the cooker, how much energy. And then on the last page, I'm not expecting you to really read any of this, <laughs> but just to glance at the graph so that you can have an idea what we're, what we're after, is that the slope of that last graph will give us the, the value when it crosses the uh, 50 degrees Celsius mark above ambient. Okay, so you've been introduced to that document, and, and we can have copies later so we can read that um, uh, throughout the, the meeting. Um, very important is to know the aperture area. How big is the, uh, how much energy is coming into the cooker? And I was inspired by uh, a paper that um, Bernie Mueller wrote, and, and this is on the SCI website as well. He keeps this um, online. And he had a very interesting approach that I liked. A lot of solar cookers have strange shapes, and it's not evident what the aperture size is of that cooker. For a, an SK-14, a, parallel, a, a parabolic dish, it's very clear, it's a, it's a circle, okay? But in this case, we're seeing the profile view of um, uh, a cooket, and the, sh the shape is quite strange. So his approach is to take an image, a picture with the camera, as you're looking straight at the cooker in the direction that the sun would be entering, and then you import that picture into your, your computer. You draw a series of rectangles and triangles superimposed over that picture. And then you've had a scale marking so you know what that, that uh, size actually refers to. Ultimately, you can get the area of the cooker. So I thought, great, that's a, that's a wonderful approach. But he didn't tell me what angle he was looking at. And that might be fine for one particular day at a particular elevation angle for the sun. In order to load the solar cooker for the ASABE test, we need to know specifically what is the aperture area of that cooker on that specific day. So I've taken this inspiration from, from Bernie Mueller and I've created an approach that will allow us to predict ahead of time what the aperture is on any given day at any location in the world. So that is essentially to take um, uh, the, the, the uh, maximum area of a solar cooker and then we'll apply a trigonometric offset to correct for that. So what does that mean? In this picture I show you the, uh, the uh, side view of a generic cooker. And that particular cooker has an elevation angle. That means that at that particular angle, that's the, the, the most energy will be coming into to that uh, oven. In order to calculate it, it's very simple with, with uh, measuring a couple dimensions, this uh, hypotenuse and the footprint of the cooker. And then by taking a, a trigonometric equation, you can get the elevation angle. 
Then take a picture along that elevation angle and do what Bernie Mueller did. Okay? So you get there the maximum area of that cooker. And then, depending on the day, you take an offset of the elevation angle. Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, give you an example of how this, ha how this worked. Okay, so I, I, I went home, <laughs> set up my camera, took a picture of the cook it. It was very important to load the cook it with food because otherwise it won't sit flat. And I imported the picture into my computer, drew a series of, <laughs> of rectangles and, tri and triangles over that picture, and I got an area, 0 0.475 meters squared. When I looked at that, I thought, hmm, there might be some error. I don't know. Maybe there's a better way. And then I thought back to my calculus class. The Riemann sum, for those of you who have taken calculus, this might look familiar, is a way to calculate the area underneath a curve, the curved surface. I'm inspired by the midpoint version of that. And then I went back to my, my image of the cook it, <laughs> And I applied a series of rectangles that use the Riemann sum, and I summed up all of those rectangles, and I got 0 0.477 meters squared. Almost the same answer. <laughs> so it looks like both approaches work, and here I'm, I'm using them again for the Haynes solar cooker, which I've been also using some, uh, doing some preliminary testing with. And both approaches give just about the same answer. So within our error, I think that's fine. Now, when we do a test, we need to know what is the solar time. So for any place in the world, you can do this. You can go online and figure out what is the solar noon of any location. So this is one particular website that I've been using for, for doing that. This is for Vadodara. Uh, just the other day, solar noon was 12.47 p.m. So that means ideally we would run a test starting at two, uh, sorry, at, at, at 10.47 a.m. and run until 2.47 p.m. In addition, there's uh, elevation angles that you can pull off the internet. There's vast libraries of this. And this is uh, important for understanding what is the average elevation angle during the test. So in this case, <clears throat> this is the, uh, the, the, the trace from just the other day and um, we're able to get the average solar angle, uh, elevation angle from, from these graphs. And that was uh, just about 43 degrees for this location. All right, so let me introduce you to the SCI testing station for PEP, for the performance evaluation process. Uh, this is very exciting. This is something brand new, and this is the first model that has been designed and built at SCI. Our colleague Justin Tabachnik, who is based in California near, near Sacramento, actually built this, and we had re worked remotely through a number of phone calls, emails, and uh, worked together for, on the design. This is uh, uh, very exciting because it has these elements. It's portable. You saw me pick it up with one hand. It's robust. It, it made it here <laughs> through, the, through the travels. It has a relatively low cost. The parts are uh, less than $1,000. It's very simple to use, and it stores data on an SD card. It's also going to be an open source. We're planning to release the plans on how to build this so that any testing center, if they wanted to build one, they could do so. I'm going to pop open the door real quick. The ribbon's going to be outside during the, during the demonstrations. Um, but on the inside, you have electronics. These electronics are low-cost, hobby-based electronics based on the Arduino system. And the parts that we have that are important in there there's the, are listed here on, on this slide. But essentially, what this allows us to do is to record all the parameters that we need during, during a test. And in this slide, uh, those parameters are for the wind speed, which is recorded by the anemometer, the solar energy that's coming in, which is recorded by the pyranometer, and then we also have on this model three thermocouples. We can test two solar cookers while also uh, recording the ambient temperature. So, yesterday, <laughs> 
we were uh, on the on the patio at uh, here at the Muni Save Ashram, and we ran a test. Several of you were, were there to uh, observe this, and um, this is a picture showing uh, the, the testing station, uh, recording temperature values from the Haynes cooker and also the the cooket. So I just wanted to share with you some of the, those re results. I'll, I'll call these preliminary results, and. Um, here we go. These are the temperature measurements from the three thermocouples. One is ambient temperature in gray, and then the uh, red and the blue trays are the temperatures from the two cookers. While those uh, temperatures are, are coming in, we're also recording wind speed and uh, the solar energy through the pyranometer. In the case of this test, um, this is valid for the anemometer because the wind was very low. As long as the wind speed is not over 2.5 uh, meters per second for a 10 minute interval, we're safe. So we were well below the, the, the wind limit. And I, at the time, I was standing in a, in a shaded area for the wind. We, were, we, we had some walls behind us. And I, I noticed something very interesting with the pyranometer data. It was a pretty clear day yesterday. So why, why were those little blips, those little decreases along, along the pyranometer? Um, they seem to be rather periodic as well. <laughs> um, I was a little surprised about that, but I just wanted to share with you an intricacy to taking scientific measurements is that when you think you are safe, you may not be. All right? And what I mean here is that if you go back to that picture, you'll see that those solar cookers were set up um, along a wall. And we carefully would go along the wall uh, without going in front of the pyranometer. About every half an hour, uh, turn the solar cooker. All right. So we were standing outside of the direct sun. However, it dawned on me that that bright white wall behind <laughs> is a reflective surface. So actually, while we were not standing in front and blocking the direct light coming into the pyranometer, we were likely blocking reflected light. So <laughs> we're learning uh, through do doing this, but that's what probably led to that. And I'm also suspicious because then it was lunchtime, I was told to leave, and I couldn't do anything for the last hour of the test. There's no blips during that time. <laughs> so uh, the results as they came in from yesterday look like this. And um, this is... It matches the, the type of data that is uh, showcased in the ASAB standard. And, and, and what I'm happy to present here is that it's working. Every scientist likes to know <laughs> that when they've developed instrumentation, it actually works. Not only that it gathers the data, but that the data makes sense. And so here we have some of the first results um, using this system. And um, we look forward to using this much more. I'll be demonstrating this um, during, during the meeting. And um, I just wanted to share with you some next steps. Um, but that reminds me one more thing. If you look at these two curves, there's an R squared value. And the R squared value needs to be, below, uh, be above 0.75 for the test to succeed. So these data points work very well for the Haynes cooker, but if you look at the cook it, the R squared value, 0.5 something. Okay. So that actually didn't meet the, um, the stability of, of the test. And I'll just share that that test used a plastic bag around the cooking pot, and a plastic bag has many different angles on it. So the incident angle um, if, if, you're, if light is coming in straight and uh, at a right angle to a, a transparent surface, most will go through. And if you start having a number of different facets of light coming in, many different incident angles, you get a distribution of transparency. So having a bag around a cooking pot is not an ideal system for cooking, but in this case for testing, it's, it's really not the way to go. So we'll be shifting to and rec making recommends, recommendations to not, not do that. Anyway, that's uh, another subtlety there. Next steps, um, this is really for, for our action ahead. Um, <clears throat> this testing station will be applicable not only for uh, panel cookers, box cookers along the ASABE standard, but it will also uh, be applicable to the uh, protocol that Dr. A.G. Chandak is going to uh, come up here and talk about in just a moment. Manufacturers, um, I'm suggesting uh, to provide 
aperture size and uh, the elevation angle for make the job easier for the testing facilities. If we don't have to take that picture, import the picture into the uh, PowerPoint, draw rectangles and, and, and uh, triangles all over it, it will, it will really smoothen the job and make it more uniform. Um, please visit the, the PEP demonstrations during the next few days. Come and talk to me. I want to hear from you. Um, I want to uh, also share more detail. I couldn't give that all today, um, but there's a lot more to the story. So come and visit us during the, uh, during the, uh, the demonstrations. We, we would appreciate your feedback. And together, if we can come up with one voice, um, our unified voice will actually have impact at the GACC. They're ready to hear us, and so we would like to pass along a recommended uh, testing protocol. I'll be giving concluding remarks on Wednesday, so in two days, um, what, whatever uh, we talk about during the next few days, I'll, I'll just uh, make a conclusion at that time. So thank you so much. Um, that's my part of the talk, and I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Chandek to come up.